Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Warm welcome as we gather for worship here and online. We're grateful for uh, the chance to stay home and avoid the iciness of your driveways. The main roads seem to be okay, but uh, avoid this parking lot area. We have salted a little bit, but not as much as we'll need to. Uh, but be safe out on the sidewalks as well as we gather. Uh, today as we gather, we uh, want to let you know that the uh, Gospel Jamboree, which we knew it as, now called Celebrating Dreams, is next Sunday at 2 o'clock, uh, and it'll be at uh, Patriot, so please join us as we celebrate the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, as we gather today, also please keep in your prayers, prayer of thanksgiving for the wedding of Karina and Keaton Karosik. Uh, Ke uh, Karina is the granddaughter of Jerry Stalka. So please keep them in your prayers as they begin their journey uh, together. I know that next Sunday's annual report review will take place uh, following the service at 1030 and in two weeks our annual meeting will take place at 1030 as well. They're both in person and on Zoom. Uh, so we will have that link sent out in the letter as well as it was in an email. If you need it, we'll send it out again next week for next week's annual report review as well as for the annual meeting. As we gather, uh, we just ask you to please continue to stay safe and be healthy. If you're not feeling well, please uh, stay home and rest and make sure you are well. As uh, the numbers continue to grow, we encourage you to be wise in your contact tracing awareness as well uh, as we gather. So we're grateful for your willingness to gather for worship and be socially distanced, so please stay well and be safe uh, in your daily journey. We gather now for our beginning of worship, so I invite you to stand if you're able for our confession and forgiveness reading. Today is baptism of our Lord Sunday, and so we gather at the font, and we remember that we are a blessed community called by God through the waters and the word. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word and made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Let us sing our opening song, Drawn to the Light. have sought a light in the heart of the darkest night just, just when, when we thought all would be lost we were drawn to the light of god dawn is in sight gone is the night drawn to the light and the morning glorious and bright oh what a sight to be tell a heaven from hell if everyone dwells in the dark of night morning dispels gently compels and we're drawn to the light of god dawn is in sight dawn is the night drawn to the light and the morning glory 
glorious and bright. Oh, what a sight to be drawn to the light of God. Where is the sun? Oh, there will be none. The Lamb is the one who is shining bright, bids us to come. Life has begun when we're drawn to the light of God. Dawn is in sight, all is the night, drawn to the light and the morning, glorious and bright. Oh, what a sight to be drawn to the light of God. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit, revealed him as your beloved son. Keep all who are born of water and the spirit faithful in your service, that we, may be, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord, almighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, come and sing praises to the rock of all ages, come and sing praises to Jesus my Lord. Lord, almighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness, come and sing praises to the rock of all ages, come and sing praises to Jesus my Lord. Come and adore him, bow down before him, come and sing praises to Jesus our Lord. I sing praises to your name. to your name, O oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O oh Lord, praises to your name, O oh Lord, for your name great and greatly to be praised. Come and sing praises to the rock of all ages. Come and sing praises to Jesus my Lord. Come and adore him bow down before him, come and sing praises to Jesus our Lord. 
And our first reading is from Isaiah 43. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth, everyone who was called by name, my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Word of God. And now we will read Psalm 29 responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord. The glory to you, God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of thunder. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. And the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned above the flood, and the Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. And our second reading is from Acts 8. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit has not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of God. Please stand for the reading of today's gospel, which is from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The gospel of our Lord, praise to you. May be seated. Grace and peace to you, my friends in Christ. 
in the community of Zion and in the community of the church, wherever it gathers, online, in person, throughout the world. We gather this day knowing that the dove, if you look way up there above the Epiphany star, you like the Epiphany star with the little trace of the star heading to the cross? Uh, that was a lot of fun climbing up into the organ chamber last Sunday after church. Woo! Got Maddie to climb way up there. Inside, not outside, just so you know. Um, but the dove, which is a symbol for Zion often with the dove and the Holy Spirit, is way up above the star reminding us that it indeed it is the Holy Spirit that descends upon us and creates this new community that gathers uh, throughout the world. In this place, wherever it gathers, in person or online as we gather this day and uh, in the community of faith, in this new community. And I saw how beloved it was and beautiful it was yesterday as we gathered for a wedding upstairs and downstairs. There was Ruthie's Kitchen going on at the same time. And I think it was, was it St. Peter's that was served? No. What was the name of the church? St. Tr- and is that a, what church is that? Is that a Roman Catholic church? Okay, so it's a Roman Catholic church? Sure. So we're grateful as we gathered yesterday with this church that it is also global. And this next week is also the week of Christian unity throughout the church, throughout the world. And so we are grateful for this beloved community wherever it gathers, locally, globally, uh, in the calling of the Holy Spirit to be this new community. Today's Gospel of Luke we hear about the dove descending upon Jesus. It is the start of this calling, and Jesus is about 30 years old. He leaves Nazareth behind and heads to the Sea of Galilee and then over to the Jordan to the south, about a 20-mile walk. He meets John the Baptist, a cousin, and he is baptized by John, and the dove descends on him in the form of the Holy Spirit. This anointing, this dove, is like that of kings of old, Kings were anointed and appointed and demonstrated that they were the Holy One based on a prophet or priest doing the blessing. Here, Jesus is in alignment with the anointment of kings of old. It's his time. He is the Blessed One. And the Holy Spirit only descends on one person at a time for the most part in the Hebrew Scriptures. This is his time, his calling. He is the Blessed One. He enters the river, enters the water, and John the Baptist, because of his sinfulness, knows Jesus is the one who is pure. Jesus Christ has put on humanity and put on our sins. Jesus knows that the only way now is through the cross, and for the next three years, he will probably need to remember those words, you are my beloved. Beloved, agape, unconditional love. Jesus takes on humanity in order to create a new community. You see, this community in Luke, as soon as this passage is over, it's going into the genealogy of Jesus. And of this almost long chapter about he's begotten of this person, of this person, in Luke, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. In Matthew's gospel, the genealogy of Jesus only goes back to Abraham. In Luke, the call of Jesus for this community goes beyond and to all the world. His genealogical history goes back to the creation. For all people, for God so loved the world. He has begotten from creation and is meant for all creation. Luke demonstrates the beloved community meant not just for one group of people, one nation, or one tribe. God will bless the world through Jesus, and for all. His lineage is a global tribe, a new community. After Jesus' lineage in Luke, it'll demonstrate Jesus is tested, he will be rejected, he will preach, he will heal, and it's not until chapter 5 in Luke that Jesus begins the call process of the disciples. Twelve of them, starting a new tribe, a new community, that is fulfilled as we gather and think about our second lesson in the book of Acts. 
It is often said that whoever wrote Luke wrote Acts, this global call of the church and Jesus' mission for all people. We know that in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit will descend not just on one person, but now on all these people. All of these people will be blessed and anointed to call, be called and sent back to their home communities to preach and proclaim the good news. That is our spiritual genealogy, that it is meant for all the world. Those people in the book of Acts, before we get to Acts 8, are throughout the Mediterranean area, what we would call the Middle East, Southern Europe, and Northern Africa. They will go back and proclaim good news to those places, and that genealogy will eventually be traced to us. It is our lineage, our history, and the Spirit is sent out to form a new community for all people all races, all nations, all gender identities. Peter and John, in chapter 8 now, are in Jerusalem. This is before the Jerusalem um, uh, persecution where Christianity is kind of pushed out of Jerusalem. And they hear in Jerusalem, in a church council meeting, you could say, um, that the Holy Spirit uh, has not been sent, but they hear that people in Samaria have heard the good news and are believers. They've accepted the word, but the Holy Spirit hasn't descended on them, they said. Now we know from Samaria, it is the part between Judea to the south and Galilee to the north. People would actually go over the Jordan River and avoid Samaria and come back over by Jericho in order to get Jerusalem. They avoided Samaria. We know it's Jesus and the disciples in John chapter 4 that come straight through Samaria and Jesus is at the well talking with a woman named Sam, I always like to call her, who preaches the good news back to her uh, group of people and community at Jacob's well. And this is about six miles from the capital of Samaria called the city of Samaria, where Peter and John will actually go to. These people eventually got to spend two days with Jesus for he stayed a little longer after she went back and told them everything Jesus had revealed about her and who he was. We also know about Luke chapter 10, the parable of the good Samaritan who cares for the person while the pastor and the priest and the Levites all ignore the person in need. So now, Peter and John, they go to Samaria, to the city of Samaria, to this group of Samaritans who have probably are People who remember Jesus coming through town. They've heard about him. They've heard the word and the good news of Jesus. And now they are prayed by Peter and John. And they are filled with the Spirit, receive the Spirit. And this new community in Samaria is the beginning of what the promise in Acts is all about. That the good news would go from Jerusalem to Samaria to Rome and to all the ends of the earth that this new community would be filled with all sorts of people who would be and are aware that they are all beloved children of God. And that is our call, to remind people that they are the beloved children of God. Henry Nouwen wrote this book called Life of the Beloved, and he wrote this. You are my beloved, and on you my favor rests, is what God says to each human being. We have an identity and a birthright given to us by the one who created and loves us. This blessing and essential birthright is hard to hear above all the other voices of our lives. The voices that shout, you are no good, you are worthless, you are ugly, Nobody cares about you. Life of the Beloved, Henry Nowen. You are my beloved. Jesus is heard by the Holy Spirit, these words, and we hear these ourselves. We have put on Christ, and Christ has put on us. We remember today, in the celebration of Jesus' baptism, from Christmas to Epiphany, now into Lent, into the Epiphany season before we get to Lent, that this is what we are rooted in, in community. That we are children of God, all of us, called daily to remember that our sins are placed on Christ 
and we may rise out of the baptismal waters again this day to hear and know that we have been blessed to be a blessing to all people. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen. Dusk till rising sun In the middle ages of your life Not too old, no longer young I'll be there to guide you through the night Complete what I've begun When the evening gently closes in and you shut your weary eyes. I'll be there as I have always been, with just one. Let us pray. Gathered in the remembrance of the waters of baptism and holy light shining, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Blessed Lord, be present and guide us in our shared ministry in Christ's name as Christ has done and taught us. We pray for, the, for your church throughout the world, especially for Bishop Eaton, Bishop Clements, Pastor Thomas, all those newly ordained and those recently installed into new leadership. And we pray for all theologians, councils, and committees, and all other offices that serve your ministry, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, guide us to help bring healing to your wounded creation, and be present with all those who have been impacted by severe weather and humanitarian disasters, especially all those impacted by tornadoes, 
snowstorms and ice storms and earthquakes, and all who are devastated by wars, pandemics, and political and economic crises, especially in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Israel, and Palestine. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, in a world of pandemic and systemic racism, be present with all those on the front lines, especially all vaccine scientists, all healthcare employees, first responders, especially during this Omicron wave and the ongoing Delta wave. And we pray for all in businesses and all in education. Be present with all those who are seeking wisdom for the sake of protecting communities and loved ones. And we pray for all who are in grassroots movements and public offices and all those on the front lines rallying for real justice so there can be true peace. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we give thanks for all blessings and good news. Thank you for the gift of your son, the waters of baptism that reminds us of community and new beginnings and reunion and life everlasting. And we give thanks especially for all birthdays and anniversaries. And we give thanks to you especially for the union of Helena and Keaton Carosa. And we give thanks to everything that we name aloud or in our hearts. Thank you for the gift of your son and the good news of your eternal, unconditional love for all of us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Heal our God, grant peace and love to those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit, and bring peace and love and grace to all where winter is a tough season. Bring comfort to all who grieve, especially for the families of Cliff Fields, of Bill, of Pastor Amy, of Mark, and Roger, and Ruby. We pray for all who need healing, especially Jack and Marlene, Charmaine, Miriam, Rhonda, and Marsha, and anyone else we name aloud or in our hearts. Be with everyone who is dying Peace. We continue our service with Holy Communion, so you're welcome to uh, prepare yourselves either at home or in person as we gather. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all 
Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ for whom we wait. Amen. Let us stand and sing, Go My Children. Go in peace, serve the Lord.